Hey guys, Sean here from The Roman Guy. Thanks to all your user support, we're doing yet another episode of our Neighborhood Series, and today we're at the Vatican City. They say that six million people per year go to the Vatican City, okay, inside the Vatican Museums alone. So where the crowds go, tourist traps tend to follow. It's really important that you know where to go, what to see, how to see it, where to eat, and obviously where to drink. Today we're going to explain it all, so follow along. Take a look at this map of Rome in order to get a better idea of where the Vatican City is in respect to the other attractions. Colosseum is there at the bottom, along with the Palatine Hill and Roman Forum. On the right hand side you can see the Termini train station, and at the top the Spanish Steps, Piazza del Popolo, and, and the Trevi Fountain. On the left hand side you can see the Vatican City. We've zoomed in here to show you what we refer to as the Vatican neighborhood, which is actually part of three separate Roman neighborhoods. The first is Prati, which you can see at the top. The second is called Borgo, or Borgo Sant'Angelo, which you can see there in the center portion by the river. Uh, and the third and most obvious is Vaticano, or the Vatican City. These three areas combined are what we call the Vatican neighborhood. Now the main attraction is obviously the Vatican City, which is a few things. Now it's its own government, it's its own state, as well as its own religion. You're going to come here and you're going to find a lot of things we're going to show you today, but the, the centerpiece of all that is the Vatican City. And the Vatican City has two points of interest, well, two main points of interest. The St. Peter's Basilica, which I was standing outside of earlier. Best part, it's free to get inside, and it's amazing. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. in the summer and 7 a.m. to 7, uh, 6 p.m. in the winter time. You can get the exact hours of operation because some days it closes in our blog below. Okay, click that link and lots of information about what we discussed today. The second part is the Vatican Museums. Now, don't show up to the Vatican Museums without anything, just hoping to get inside. I mean, you will, but you'll wait in line for an hour, or two hours, maybe three during the high season, and it's going to be crowded when you get in there. You want to reserve a ticket beforehand, you know, which is great. You should skip most of the lines. You still might deal with some issues getting in, but for the most part, you'll be set. If you want the Vatican Museums to come alive in front of your eyes, you have to do a guided tour. Uh, that's something we offer on our website as well, and you can get more information, once again, in that blog below. When in Italy, do as the Italians do, and get your breakfast on the road. Okay, Italians eat the breakfast standing up. They get a cafe and cornetto, maybe a bottle of water, but for cafe and cornetto, two euros, max. If you sit down, it's going to cost you more. If you go to a touristy area, it's going to cost you more. This little place is right near the Metro Taviano, on the way to the Vatican Museums. It's called Bar Giulio Cesare. I like it because I live right above it and they make amazing Cornetto. I'll show you which one I get when we go inside, but just make sure you stay away from the touristy areas. A couple blocks in the Vatican Museums could really change how much you're going to pay for your breakfast. So don't forget to order your typical Italian breakfast, which consists of a cafe e cornetto. These guys know me, so they know what I want. They have my cafe ready for me, but the cornetto, this bar, which is called Bar Giulio Cesare, right between the Vatican Metro Station and the Vatican Museums, has the best cornetto crema de riso. It's just a buttery, creamy filling inside. Mm. This is also a great point to grab a bottle of water. Once you finish it, hold on to it, and later I'll explain why. So I just finished the Vatican. You want to spend at least three or four hours there. You know, my Cornetto from this morning, it's starting to wear off. You're in Italy, nothing better than a plate of pasta. This street called Borgo Pio, it's just a few blocks away from the St. Peter Basilica and the Vatican Museums. It's a little touristy, but it has that Roman feel which I love. You know, restaurants outside with outdoor seating, pedestrian street, it's beautiful, so why not? There's a restaurant called Il Mozzicone. It's a good choice for that plate of pasta. Remember that bottle of water I told you to get before the Vatican? I told you it'd come in handy. These fountains are everywhere. This one's on Borgo Pio right at the end. We're about to get lunch. I'm just gonna fill up real quick. You know why? I'm parched. I wanna stay hydrated. Cold. 
In case you're short on time and you don't want to sit down for a plate of pasta and really get the most of the town, in Piazza Risorgimento there's a sandwich shop called Duecento Gradi. They make custom sandwiches, otherwise known as panino. Little fun fact, in Italian you don't call it a panini. Panini is plural, so if you're going to be, get two sandwiches, you're going to go get panini. But if you're going to get one, you say panino. So definitely recommend getting assorted meats in your sandwiches and a lot of vegetables you might not normally get on a sandwich, like roasted peppers or mushrooms or, you know, they have a lot of uh, different vegetables that are just, you know, under olive oil and herbs and things like that. Just load it up, get a ton of stuff in your sandwich and get some sort of a, uh, you know, spicy pesto or salsa on top. First and foremost, there's Dino and Tony. This place is the real deal. That's Dino and that's Tony way back when. You just see in their eyes they loved pasta. They have all five quintessential qualities of an authentic Roman restaurant. Number one, outdoor seating. Check. Number two, locals eat there. Check. Number three, the owners are the chefs and wait tables. Check. Number four, they're old. Check. And fifth and foremost, they always look kind of mad. Check. I walked in and Dino said to me in Italian, Hey, Yashona, look a here. We're in today's paper. Just like that. And you know the food's gonna be good. So we've just had lunch and refueled on this beautiful day. We're going to explore the rest of the Vatican neighborhood and man, there is so much to see. Just behind me, look at this massive wall. It's called Il Passetto di Borgo. Now if you're going to head to Castle San Angelo, the easiest way to do it is go to the St. Peter Basilica, find this wall and follow it straight to the castle. Now the reason it's here is because underneath it is, is this this underground passage called the Soto Passaggio, which literally means underground passage and the Pope used to use it to escape from the Vatican City in case of attack to go to the castle which was a massive fortified area. Now I'm going to head to the castle too and because I have this pasta in my stomach I might get a jog on, get a little run, burn it off. Let's go. And we're here, Ponte San Angelo, right in front of the Castel San Angelo. Originally it was built in the second century AD to be the mausoleum of the Emperor Hadrian. The guy literally built a massive structure surrounded by trees and foliage to be his tomb. Pretty epic, but I guess he was an emperor and he was also considered a god, so it's a rightful place to be buried. Now the Ponte San Angelo literally means the, the bridge of the Saint Angel and it sits in front of the Castle San Angelo, which is the castle of the Saint Angel. You can see the statue of the Archangel Michael on top, which apparently is there because Michael came down during the Middle Ages and sheathed this sword. Okay, on top of the Castle San Angelo. That was saying that hard times in Rome were coming to an end and prosperity was to come. So that's why he's there. Today it's a cool place to walk down around. It's all pedestrian. You can go inside, you can buy tickets, go up to the top. Excellent viewpoint and it's situated right in the center of the city. By now you've earned yourself a sweet treat, so check out the Gelateria Old Bridge. Right outside the Vatican walls you'll see a massive queue lining up outside. This might be because of the best gelato or maybe because that it's just the best location. If you're looking for a list of other amazing places to get gelato, check out our link to our blog as we have a list of them there. I don't know, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> We're here on Via Cola di Rienzo. This is one of the best shopping streets in Rome. A lot of Italian designers here, the latest styles, the fashion. If you have a couple bucks up in your pocket after visiting the Vatican Museums or after lunch, 
and you want to get the latest styles, this is the place to go. This way you go home dressing to impress, like the Italians do. You can see behind me, or maybe you can't see it, but there's a, a, a department store called Coin here. It's a great one-stop shop for a lot of different Italian designers and brands. It's kind of like the Italian version of Macy's or the British version of, what is it, Lorna? John Lewis. John Lewis. Check out Coin as well if you want to, you know, get a lot of different styles in one place. Recording. All right, let's redo that. All right. Chin chin. Yeah, trapped, and the, the the star the starlight comes in front of you. You see the stars. Your your hands in the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and you just lose it. You know. That's what I'm saying. We're rolling. Action. Boom shaka laka laka boom. All right, let's go.